Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Padawan Podcast, the Fox Movies All Star Wars Podcast. Where we are breaking down everything from the galaxy far, far away. I am your host, Jake Berlin. As I go by on the show, that is Qui Gon Jake. And today we are talking Rogue One. We have not talked Rogue One in quite a while on this channel, as I just touched my mic. Um, and we have some interesting things to talk about with this uh, this movie. Uh, more so about what could have happened and what maybe should have happened and what maybe should not have happened with this movie as far as screenplay and early drafts and some facts that have been revealed about the movie. Um, I'm not the only one that's going to be talking about today. As you guys can see on my right-hand side here, I have the normal panel with me. That is Grand Adam Rosino there in the middle and Mr. Obi-Wan Jacoby over there on the right-hand side. How you fellas doing? Doing good. Hello there. <laughs> I decided uh, it's only for Padawan now. It, I like. I, it. I don't want to like say it too often. I don't want to wear it out. So only Padawan. And I got to tell you guys, I'm very tempted to buy the Obi Wan Hot Toy figure. Like, <laughs> I feel like I have to own it. It is. Have you guys seen it? It is so Wait, which, cool. Which one? Which it's one? The um. It's supposed to be the Alec Guinness one, but he looks very young. Have you seen yeah. that one? Yeah. And it, yeah. He looks really cool though. All the equipment yeah. that he has. Uh -huh. He has. He has Anakin's and Qui Gon's lightsaber hilts strapped it's, to the back of his backpack. I so that's that's what I, I want see, it so bad. That's what I see Ewan Ewan Gregor looking like in the show. Oh yeah, that would be cool. Kind of like that middle age, maybe. Yeah, a exactly. Bit like a, yeah, like, like in between him, him and him. Alec Guinness, and exactly. I don't think that's canon that he has Qui Gon's hilt. No, but that's cool that the Hot Toys added it because maybe they'll add that in. That'd be interesting. more bang for your buck. More bang yeah. for your buck. Um, you guys ready to talk some Rogue One today? We haven't done it in a while. Yeah, very long time. Yeah, movie came out in 2016. It's its four year anniversary this December. Um, but that's not why we're doing this today. Uh, why we are doing this today is the writers, the screenwriters of the of the film, Gary Witta and Chris Weitz, because of all the the COVID stuff and quarantine, uh, they were gracious enough to do a Q and A live stream. Um, about the spinoff film with IGN and during said live stream they revealed a whole bunch of interesting facts and details about early scripts and ideas that they had things they may have wanted to do um, things that were on the cutting room floor that may have that things that would have entered the film if they had the choice to um, and we're going to be talking about today and we're not just going to be discussing it or going over it we have some questions we're going to be basing it around too like Things we want to see, things out of the facts that we would like to see in it most. The one thing that may have ruined the movie if it was added, stuff like that. As our conversations go on, um, and I'm going to try to kind of go in chronological order here. Um, it's it, it the article that we're basing it off of kind of is, but a lot of it is scattered throughout the film. Um, and so the one that we're going to start off with straightforward, and this is a conversation that many Star Wars fans had uh before the movie was released and as it was in production was whether or not the film should have had a crawl um obviously a major thing in star wars right all nine saga movies do it it's historic it's it's revolutionary it's kind of what the star wars movies are known for so in the lead up it was like okay does this movie need a crawl should it have a crawl would it benefit or would it not benefit from it um ultimately it didn't have a crawl they opted to put a title card up uh after an opening scene um but as revealed in the Q&A, multiple opening crawls were written. Multiple versions of a crawl were, wit were written. Um, and to give a little bit more of a Star Wars feel, obviously, and a lot of people still argue to this day that a cr it would have benefited from a crawl. And they say that Solo would have benefited from a crawl. And so the conversation is continuously being had. Um, where I personally stand on it is that I actually like that it didn't have a crawl because the main thing with the crawl is the main Star Wars music. And I also like the fact that the spinoffs don't have the main Star Wars music included in them. Um, you can definitely find ways to make it unique, just like they do have a crawl for the originals. Uh, but I personally do think that it was the smart play to not include a crawl in the spinoff movies, specifically Rogue One. I agree. Uh, at first, it annoyed me. Obviously, just because I'm so used to it was the first one, not a part of these nine movies. Well, not nine at the time, but these main saga movies. So I was like, oh, it's it needs to crawl. That's what Star Wars is. Now I'm fine with it. I I appreciate it for what it is. I actually think they should do what they did in Solo. I like yes. how Solo does it. Um Moving forward, I have no idea what 
the idea is, but I, I liked for this, it worked because we kind of already knew like what the movie was going to be. We knew the basics. Yeah. Yeah. Where solo, like who knows? So it, it, it kind of ended up working out. Um, but for these anthology ones, I wouldn't mind them taking a route of like the Han Solo's type, like the little mini, almost like notes in a way. Um, but for this one, I think the, it was definitely the right choice not to crawl. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think um, it would have it would have benefited if they did an idea where they kind of like set set the stage is a kind of like a way you can say it. Yeah. Um, we know what's going on and what it's leading to, but the majority of people aren't going to know what's happening. You know, still people to this day still think that Jenner so is Leia um, <laughs> or Ray, you know. Uh, but Jacob, yeah, I mean, you hear this and, you know, we have the solo option, you have the crawl option, you have the the neither option. Where do you kind of lie with, with this situation? Man, I am so torn on this, to be honest, because I think Rogue One would have benefited from a crawl, story-wise. But I don't think Solo needed a full crawl. It didn't. But there, it goes to show, like, look, everybody knows who Han Solo is, so there's really no confusion there. Uh, so, but Rogue One, I don't think a lot of people have any idea what's going on in that opening. And it's like, they don't even care that, uh, his the wife gets shot. It's like, mm -hmm. and we, I know you and I, Jake, we read Catalyst before the movie. So we, we were kind of well prepared for it, but if they could have summed up Catalyst it, parts of it in you, the you in a crawl, it would have been nice. You probably could have put the book synopsis for catalyst as the crawl something like that but also i can't imagine a crawl without the right the original star wars music thing yeah. and i don't want that music in a spin-off film so i'm it's kind of it's really tough if i have to choose i'm gonna say no crawl i'm gonna say go you can do the solo thing because didn't solo have multiple pages like two or three and it yeah. faded to two or three different sentences uh, if you could do something like that, and it's kind of like how Clone Wars does it, even though they have like a, a quote a of quote. the day mm -hmm. type thing. Uh, I, I would prefer something more like that for Rogue One uh, because I used to be like Brian and it has to have a crawl if it's Star Wars, but you can't have the original theme there. So I'm leaning towards no crawl. So I'm okay. They went with it, but I just for that movie specifically, it could have used a little bit of backstory. It, it would be it would be incredibly interesting to hear. I mean, and you can do it. Anybody can edit together, but hear a Star Wars theme or more like a Rogue One theme with a crawl. Just imagine yeah. kind of like picturing what that would look and feel like as Star Wars fans, knowing like when the Star Wars logo pops up, the instant first beat, we know what it is. But then in Rogue One, it wouldn't be that beat. And it, it'd be very interesting. I, I think that the way that they did Solo was probably the way to go. Um, I have no doubt that if, if they wrote crawls for this movie, that they were awesome. I couldn't even imagine what the crawl would have would have said or or teased um, because it's not in the Skywalker name, right? It's something completely different. Like the world is in turmoil right now. What that crawl would have looked like. Um, but Probably I do think lines, Jedi are gone. And yeah, yeah, exactly. The Empire like has risen. 66 or something. Yeah, um, I do think that if they're going to continue these, these spinoff movies that they're going to need to set the stage because there's so many different stories and eras and times that they play with a lot of the time, you have to set the stage. You, you have to, uh, because we don't know they're going forward. They're going back. They're going in the middle. That's just what star Wars does, but you have to make sure the audience knows outside of us who read the books or do the research or something like that. Yeah. I, I think honestly, like I could see the reasons for it in this. My question is, are we never going to see a crawl again? Is the next trilogy of movies going to have a crawl it is, is like, it, it kind of makes it more, it leaves it more up to like guessing now, because I mean, this time period probably is more than likely done for a while. So what does that mean with classic elements like the crawl moving forward? Are we going to see it in whatever 
type of movie we get next? Or is it going to be like Rogue One where it's a nothing thing and go into it or solo where it's a couple of lines here and then go into it. So it's an interesting thing to think about. Yeah. They have to find a way to let people know what time era it's in. You know, like you said, Jake, we're going to know, we're going <laughs> to know well ahead of time. As soon as they announce what time era movie takes place, we'll know, but general audience members need to know. And maybe a good way is something like, I don't even know, uh, like 500 years before the, the Clone Wars era or something like that. Like what's a, an era that people are very familiar with. That's a real thing in the world. Because if some, if somebody puts out a war movie and they say 1941, we know when that is. So how did they tell us when that particular movie takes place? I think if they at least can find a way to do that, then it'll work. It's a really good point. Really good point. Um, so sticking with the crawl sense of things, um, let's move on to the title uh, because this is an interesting one. Um, we know that during development, Rogue One wasn't the original title. They came up with multiple different names, and just a couple of those were officially announced during this Q&A. And I, I got to say, man, like Rogue One can be a lot of people can argue that Rogue One isn't a great title. It is by far, by far the best title out of these four oh, that we absolutely. have right now. Two of those um, three are absolute garbage. Well, one of them look, sounds like a video game and the other two or excuse me. One of them sounds like a book and the other two sound like a comic book or a video game. Um, and so those <laughs> titles for, you know, maybe listening. Uh, so and they, they kept the same title card. Um, as Rogue One, the site created them, which is really cool. Uh, but the title was Dark Times, A Star Wars Story, Rebellion, A Star Wars Story, and Shadow of the Death Star, A Star Wars Story, which is the one that I think sounds like a novel. It's and it is just yeah. awful. Um, I am so thankful they went with Rogue One because the <laughs> these logos are so bad. <laughs> uh, Rebellion is the only one that gives me like an no. inch... No, listen, only it gives me like, eh, like that's right here. When I hear that one, it's like, eh, it's but, the least uh, worst one, but it's so exa lazy. Exactly. It's but so it's lazy. Exactly yeah. where I was going. <laughs> Is it so obvious and so like rebellion? And you're like, oh, okay. Whereas, and then the other two are just horrible. Shadow, Shadow of the, of Death, the Death Star. Star. <laughs> that is Shadow the longest of... title. It's like. That's ridiculous. Come, uh, it's yeah. And then what was that? Dark times. Dark times. <laughs> that it's not even a title. It's just like hey, no, it's not dark times. Well, it's and, it's from it's from the movie. Someone says dark times. And no, it, I know, a, but look, it's a good picture of that time period. But as a title goes, it's terrible. There's like no context to it at all. It's just dark times. That's, <laughs> that's a Star Wars story. It's like what? <laughs> Well, I think I the article know. says that sounds more like a time era, like yes, 30 yes, years yeah, is yes, yes. considered the dark times. But I don't know if that's a good title for the movie. Even honestly, Rogue One, Rogue One just sounds cool, but it's not yeah. a great title either, in, in my opinion. But it's like you you said, it it, it's way better than all of these. Mm -hmm. But Rogue One is just the name of what is it? The name they make up for their ship for their, ship. Or their yeah. crew yeah. when they go into battle, which. For the movie, it works. Once you get to that moment, you're like, oh, okay, that's a cool title. But prior to the movie coming out, you have no idea what it means. And I just, I'm so glad they didn't use any of these titles. These are, these are awful. Like, are these the best ones they had? Other than <laughs> That's one? what I want to know. I, yeah, I, I would be interested to see all the mock-ups of all the titles they had. But unfortunately, we'll probably never know that. But I'm just, I'm happy that they went with Rogue One. The only thing I will say is that the one thing that I wish they would change for the title is that I still with it was uh, oh. anthology. Yes. I, I wish I, I, I wish it never went back to or went to a Star Wars story. Um, I wish it was Star Wars anthology Rogue One. Like yes, I, I wish that was the too. title because it sounds so much better than a Star Wars story. It sounds Disney fied. Absolutely. It just sounds like a Disney move. I'm going to disagree with you because then you're going to have to put that after everything. Solo. No, and, Star, Wars, Star anthology, Wars anthology solo. Solo. Star Wars and yeah. Star Wars anthology I, solo. So you I would like, have Star Wars anthology very small at the top, and then it would just yep. say solo or yep. row one. I'm gonna disagree because I like the way Rogue One, a Star Wars story, 
flows. I like it. I I think it's kind of cool because it, it it almost makes when I hear that it almost kind of makes me think like of like a myth. It's like where it's it like sounds like a children's book to me. No, it sounds to me it <laughs> sounds like something that like people passed on a story they've passed on like the hey have you heard the story of Rogue One like that it's kind <laughs> of like how I hear it, a Star Wars story. So I don't know. I like it. I personally anthol it's t- anthology to me is too too fancy of a word for casual like well that's Star what they Wars were calling anthology. it for the longest oh time i know yeah star wars anthology rogue one and i it just stuck and it it yeah. worked well because they were calling these all the anthology movies so which yeah, sounds you know, incredible sense. just imagine that blu-ray set the anthology movies i hope that they okay see did... now if it's like that that's i like so the solo a star wars story sound good to you too yeah I, I like hope that. they ditch the a Star Wars story thing, to be honest. It just whatever it is, I don't even know what, what they're gonna call movies. Like see now uh, to me it would sound weird if they did like solo two a Star Wars story. Well, like I, the reason they did it is to separate it from the Skywalker saga. That's why well, they did it. It's like it's like those movies have episode one, episode four, episode seven. These have a Star Wars story, so they're separating themselves. It's but they don't need to anymore. You have to attach the Star Wars name for marketing. So we've seen that so many times in past in past movies, like Hobbs and Shaw, right? They have because they have to let you know it's from Fast and Furious. They put Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. Like I don't know the perfect way to do it, but well, that's where Bumblebee made a mistake. That's where Bumblebee made a mistake. It should have been called Transformers Bumblebee, and it would have made hundreds of more thousands of dollars. So it could go either way with Star Wars. Yeah, that's very true on that one. Like, all right, let's say they do the old Republic, the old Republic, a Star Wars story that for me, that doesn't work. Uh, See, now I think that's a different territory. I think this that only works in the not the saga to me. It's like because to me, that's a whole entire new thing. You know, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic like that. I I wouldn't I wouldn't mind if single spin-off movies had a Star Wars story, but trilogies were given Star Wars the Old Republic or Star Wars blank blank blank. Yeah, that makes the most sense. Something like that. I think if they kept it to a one movie guideline for a true spin-off and gave it a Star Wars story, I think I'd be okay with that. But the trilogies can't have that. The trilogies cannot. That's just it would you're gonna name all three movies a Star Wars story like that? Just no, 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 yeah, no, no way. No. They're probably revisiting the whole thing. To be honest, I think they have to be after everything that happened with Solo, and it, I think they would definitely have to be. I do think something. I, I I was trying to think of a good, a better title than Rogue One for for this movie, and I was I think tying it to the Death Star somehow would is a good idea, or tying it to the plans being stolen somehow. But I guess their that crew who did the job was Rogue One, so it it works. Cool. Let's go ahead and move on, guys. And the next thing we're going to be talking about is the early draft ideas for Jin and how um, her story was originally different from how she ended up in the film. And that is mainly in that she was the one to discover the Death Star in the early drafts of the film. Um, they revealed uh, Witta and White, excuse me, um, that she was in a much more of a different um, role in the beginning of the film. When we first met her, she was in prison, right? That's how we kind of first met her after she was a child. Um, but this time, she was the one to actually discover the Death Star's existence and kind of search out the plans um, rather than kind of be hesitant to do so. And um, it's interesting because and we could talk about all different things with this, like how it would have changed the character and the entire storyline and everything. But the biggest thing that probably would have happened is that a character would have been erased from the situation in Bodhi Rook because ultimately they gave him uh, the plans to reveal to Saw Gerrera in the middle of the film played by Riz Ahmed. Um, and so if you had given that role to Jin, Bodhi Rook would have been out of the occasion. And then the entire relationship and idea behind Saw and Jin probably would have been completely different because they had that relationship when she was a kid. And so it's a very interesting idea. Um, I mean, we'll never see it, see how it really played out, but I, I gotta say, I mean, it's pretty opposite from what we got on on the actual finished product. Are we giving our opinions on one of those? If that's one of our if, three, if this is one of your questions, then go for it. Yeah. Okay, so this is in one of my threes, and so we did. You explain what it is. We've got favorite, 
It's like favorite. Oh, so yeah, the the so the three questions I have is your favorite fact that you didn't that didn't get used that you would have liked to see, the one thing you would have despised being added, and the biggest fact that you think would have changed the entire perspective. How about we do this uh, while we're reading this, and we can go back if we need to. But if we get to that part of the of the breakdown, just reveal that that's your part of of the questions. Well, mine was the titles, the ones. Okay, that well, I like, you go ahead before we get before we move on. Well, we kind of talked about it already. Uh, I. If it were one of those three, I would have completely despised it. I wouldn't have minded a different title than Rogue One. But if out of all of these things, if if one of those were actually the title of the movie, it would upset me the most out of all of these things. So that was mine. Um, okay, so this Jin discovering the Death Star for me was my despise. I think this would have changed the whole movie. I think that this almost sounds like a different movie the way they talk about it, about how, how much it would have changed would have affected the whole entire movie. I feel like almost, mm-hmm. um, I think it's part of the movie is her discovering that her dad built this death machine, but then he f- left a hole for her to fix his mistake. And like all of that's almost kind of lost when you're like, Oh, she finds it out. She does it this way. She's the one. And it kind of changes the whole entire thing. Like I, I I would have probably, it, it would have been so much more about her than it was everyone else. Now, is she the main character? Absolutely. But these other rogue one people partners or whatever you want to call them with her are not far behind her, especially Cassian and K2SO in importance. And if you would have given her this much importance, it would have changed the whole dynamic of this movie. So we, we, I mean, it can be argued that we probably wouldn't have Cassian or K2SO in the roles that they had. If this would have happened. Well, yeah, there's, they were, they were essentially a co-lead to her. It was the three of them, mainly for the majority of the film. And you stick her in this type of situation where she's a completely different character than what she is from what we have. Then there is a chance that we don't get a character like Cassian or more specifically a character like K2SO who were for a lot of people, the biggest best parts of the movie. Yeah. And Bodhi to me was never that big of a character and he still really isn't. So like them saying like, oh, he would have been completely wiped out. I mean, yeah, okay, but he was probably only in it for about five minutes. That I'm not more concerned about his character as how much it would have changed everything else. It would have changed everything. It could it could have even affected uh um uh the whole entire Jetta scene, like the Guardians of the Wills, all that, like yeah. It could have affected everything. We could have, it could have been a whole different movie at parts. Well, and the so. biggest thing, if you take out Bodhi, before, and I'll Jacob, I'll let you talk after this, but um, they don't come up with the name Rogue One because he's the one that says it. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. For me, it's to me. I didn't see that this would affect the movie as drastically as Brian sees it, but I still think it would have been big changes for sure. Because isn't Bodhi Rook the? Is, isn't he the one who brings the transmission with her father? He's he's sent by no, he's sent by he's her sent dad by to him. do it to Saw. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So how else would she have gotten that? We maybe wouldn't have had that moment. Maybe the best moment in the movie when she breaks down seeing her father talk on Edu right yeah. before we'll the talk about planet gets yeah. blown up. So I that was huge. So I uh, oh no, not Edu on uh, on Jeddah the transmission. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like when she falls to her knees and when her dad's talking to her. Yes, yes. That, yes, that yes. was big. So I, uh, it would have changed a lot of different things. It, it, and I don't, I wouldn't have minded this to be honest, but it, it definitely would have been a little bit of a. Di- I think it would have changed like twenty five percent of the movie and not like sixty percent of it. But uh, I, I could live without it because I, and also I'm not too big on the Bodhi Rook, but he was cool. Like I never was I too positive or too negative on him. I like Riz Ahmed. Riz Ahmed's great, so but the I. character wasn't hundred percent necessary. Uh, but I, I would, I could have done without this, but I don't mind it too much. 
So um, speaking of Edu, and I quickly mentioned it in the wrong situation. Uh, let's go ahead and get to that part of this breakdown real quick because Edu played a huge part in this film, more specifically to Jin's story. Obviously, yeah. they went there uh, to find Galen or so and um, kind of move along the plan and, and the, the story that was happening there. Um, and Cassian had this side plan of trying to kill him and everything, and that's where Galen ended up dying, and Jin got to see him for one final time. But Edu originally had a larger role in the movie. It was originally going to be the start of the film. Um, and it, it's, it's difficult with star Wars because a lot of the planets that we see, we only see one small sliver of that planet and we don't know how important it is or, or what it really features. Um, it's a, it's a big rainy planet from what we saw the empire had taken over the majority of the planet, at least that part of it. And so what capacity it would have played, we're not really sure. Um, to me, this is one of the things inside this breakdown that's like, you can go either way and it really would have made a difference for me. Um, I think Edu served its purpose and I think it was served very well. Uh, it was a very interesting planet. I mean, it's like full of rocks and boulders and that the the starship fight that was going on and all that stuff was really cool, but I don't really know what else it could have been added to the story ultimately. I mean, they probably could have added something really cool, but I think it served its purpose as, as it should have. Yeah, I'm the same. It's like, okay, like how many dozens and dozens of planets do we have already that it's like, okay, I don't necessarily, I'm not going to be devastated if I don't know enough about one more planet. There's probably another hundred more that they have to tell that I'm probably going to care more about. I think it was fine for what it was. It served its purpose. Yeah, I... I'm glad they decided to go away from this because that scene on Edu and it's kind of in the second act of the movie is a huge scene. And it it's when uh, Cassian's going to kill her father mm -hmm. and he decides not to. So that was a big turning moment. He tells her like that he has to do what he has to do and he decides not to kill him. So that's a huge moment for him because we think we think he's just this heartless rebel spy. And that was a huge turning point for him. So that would have taken that away. And then do, do we even get the scene where her father dies and she has to go to him and talk to him for one last time? Because I doubt they would have gone to Edu, then gone back to Edu again. So, and this kind of ties in a little bit with her discovering the plants of the Death Star. Cause it says that she, this is where she finds out about the exhaust port and everything. So you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, good call. So good it, call. I think they would have gone together. So good thing we, we we went from one to the others because that yeah so I I Edu is one of the best scenes in the movie so I'm glad they didn't change it from what the film is now yeah and one thing we haven't mentioned is that it after the opening scene of the movie which could have been changed could have not been changed but we also see and it's a little closer to what we know of with Catalyst this is when we see Krennic and Galen back together for the first time and this is where we find out that Gal that he finds out that Galen was a traitor. And that's kind of how it all happened. So it's a very pivotal point um, for us who have read Catalyst, knowing the oh, character yeah. of Galen and character in their history. Absolutely, yeah. And doesn't th don't they shoot down all those people anyway? They shoot down all the scientists, I, yeah. Yeah. Which is Man. crazy. Krennic is um, an a -hole. It's a dark, it's a dark <laughs> movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is why it should have been an anthology, because it's darker. Um, okay, so dark times. let's go ahead and talk about... Um, <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and talk about real quick uh, Bor Goulet. Um, this is the squid like character on, um, Jetta who was with Saw Gerrera. Um, I'll say this before I get into this. This was my least favorite part of the entire movie. Um, I agreed. I, I completely, this is the, to a lot of people, this is the wrath tar scene in the force awakens. Um, and so Borgolette, if you remember the movie correctly, essentially ex extracts the truth from you. He's a giant squid truth serum dude. Um, he's, ugly and he's hideous and he's scary uh, but they initially had a, a different idea for the character in that they were going to call him what's called a memory trader so essentially you trade intel to him for your past memories and the squid was going to essentially like the past memories or like the i think the traumatic childhood memories as they put it like he feeds off of it and they were going to get intel from him for that and Jin was going to go to him instead of Bodhi, which Bodhi did in the movie um I, I'll, I mean, this is another one that doesn't really matter to me because both both ideas are terrible, in my opinion. Yeah. I think it was I think it was unnecessary to even do that. They could have easily found a much more derivative and interesting way to do this. 
Um, and so I'm, I'll say this, I'm glad they did the way they, they, they did the way they did it. This option is flat out horrible. Yeah, it's, it's horrible. I think the whole thing could have been easily just done with maybe didn't like, even do it. Anything truth serum, whatever. Well, I was, I was trying to think of like, when I was reading it, I was like, well, okay, what, what is something they could have done realistically is maybe saw in his rebels captured, like one of the old Imperial uh, torture droids and converted it into it's like, that would have been dope. Cause you would have been or, like, Oh, the old Imperial, the torture or droid. you capture Bodhi. Like maybe you don't make him good and you, you keep him bad and he gives up the information. Yeah. So, I mean, it, I get it. I guess they were pro- maybe just trying to like, add another like scary monster or some show the world around him in Jeddah and stuff. Yeah, I guess, but it, it kind of ultimately landed flat and the spin on it is kind of creepy in a way. Like who thought of that? And it's like, he feeds off (laughs) your bad memories. Like a sexual drive for him or something. Yeah. It's weird. (laughs) It says like, didn't it say like he like hungers for it or something? It said something kind of weird. And I was like, when yeah, I read it, oh, he found delicious. Yeah, he finds them. Oh, yeah. The uh with information exchange for her traumatic childhood memories, which he found delicious. <laughs> it's weird. It is yeah. weird. Okay, and so again, that's, look, yeah, that's, 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 that's worse just what, than the original option. That's how the article yeah. is written. But if that's how it's described, like why? It's why? and who thought of that? You yeah, it's it's an interesting one, but definitely caught not there. Yeah, I think that uh, the original way they do it was still bad. I mean, it's most people's worst part of the movie. And yeah. it was just completely unnecessary because the scene is dumb. And then what? how Bo- uh, Brody, uh, Bodie Rook is acting after that, like he's all just totally like, traumatized. I hated yep. the because I liked him yep. in the beginning of the movie. And yep. then he's all traumatized for the rest of the film. And I'm like, okay, you kind of just like took away this character now for, for the rest of the movie until the end, until he snaps out of it. So it not only affected that moment, it affected the rest of the movie. And so this to me, just, it's just, this just sounds terrible. This sounds like one of the bad, bad. episodes of clone wars. Like when they would do silly, <laughs> it does kind of sound like a yeah. crappy clone wars episode. So well, and I think, the rebels too. I, yeah. A couple of those. So I Come. think when, when people are making a, Star Wars movie, they're like, I have to include weird creatures. And it's yeah, like, like, yeah, yeah. You, you can, but you can do it without being just just straight up Creepy. dumb. I don't know. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> uh, um, all right. Well, let's move on from that that crap fest. Um, so originally, so we know that, uh, and this is one of the most beloved part of the movies. Obviously, Yavin 4 is a beloved location inside of Star Wars. It's the home of the original Star Wars base that we know from the original movie. And they used it in this film brilliantly, in my opinion, but that wasn't always the case. Um, Widow and White's revealed that they orig- the original plan, and this was all scrapped because of budgetary concerns, um, was that the Rebel base was originally going to start on Dantooine and then move to Yavin 4 because we know that in the original Star Wars movie, it's revealed that Dantooine was in fact a rebel base, but that it was uh, deserted. And this was when um, Tarkin was trying to get information from Leia. And she says the rebel base is on Dantooine, but then he blows up um, her home planet of Alderaan. And so I look, I would have loved to have seen this. I would have loved to have seen this, but this movie was never about the rebel Alliance more so than it was about Jin in this kind of like rogue crew going to get these Death Star plans. Because remember, the Rebel Alliance never backed what they were doing. No, never. They had they to never go do and, it on their own. Yeah. And and the Rebel and this would have made it about the Rebels if you followed a story from one base, that base being deserted, and then moving to the Yavin 4. And so all while I would have liked to have seen Dantooine because we've heard so much about Dantooine and what it was, and you know, obviously in the original movie, you can tell that story a different time in some other medium. I like what they did because like I said, it didn't make it about the rebels. I echo your thoughts a hundred percent. Um, I would have liked to see Dantooine, but it would have taken away from it. And it almost kind of like <clears throat> makes you understand how that base got there. It wasn't just like, cause that was one of the things I, when I, I remember when I first watched return of the Jedi, I said, 
where the hell did this base come from? Like <coughs> they they had they had this base the whole time, and then now it kind of shows you this has been a base that's been there, and like it was their home essentially. So it kind it it almost like made more sense into the future. Whereas Dantooine would have just been like one of those like, hey look, we tied it to this part, and it it kind of probably would have lost a little bit of uh relevance for Yavin and it would have cost them a crap ton more money just for like a probably a little teeny bit of nostalgia just for a moving day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, the, the article says it would have required a scene showing them evacuate from Dantooine to Yavin four. And it just, that's just unnecessary. Like why yeah, yeah. waste any time? Just have them be on Yavin four from the beginning. I will, I don't mind seeing Dantooine in the future. Sure. Like, why not? Now we can see that planet in the future sometime. There's no reason not to. So I, it doesn't matter. Like they could have, they could have said it was Dantooine or some random other planet. It just would have exactly. been an Easter egg. That's it. So exactly. why waste, why spend an extra $10 million on an Easter egg? It, there would have been no point. Yeah. Agreed. Um, all right. The next little quick one that we could talk about is the Tusken Raider and how the writers originally wanted to make a rebel Tusken Raider um, and that it was full on going to happen, but it was shot down by one Pablo Hidalgo, the canon genius. Um, and his main reasoning was that, um, and I'll, I'll say this before I say that actually in legends, there was a Tusken Raider Jedi, um, but Pablo <laughs> Hidalgo, so cool. <laughs> I know, right. Just the look of him. Like <laughs> that would have been out. awesome. Um, but Hidalgo, he he reasoned with them and said that Tusken Raiders would never leave Tan Tatooine. They would never leave their home. They're homebody people. That's kind of how they operate. They don't get on ships. They don't do any of that, which makes sense ultimately. Would I have liked to have seen it? Sure. But there were plenty of other creatures and species in the Rebel Alliance that we saw. And you again, what we just mentioned, a Tusken Raider just would have been a cool Easter egg. This would have been my favorite thing. Really? <laughs> Just because I, I just kind of for the same exact reasons that you kind of just said, like it would have been kind of cool to see uh, it like the whole like Tusken Raider, like a one time Jedi. Like we've we've we know there's been one time Jedi is like the Mandalorian Jedi stuff like that. Um, so I, I think it, it kind of would have been cool in a way. Uh, I mean. It's hard for me to think that like one species or one alien population, not one person is ever going to want or think like, Oh, I could, I would love to go search the galaxy. Not one person. It's never going to happen. <laughs> so that's kind of like my thing behind it. I absolutely hundred percent see and understand his logic behind it. it. It makes sense. They're not, I mean, as we know them, to, or the casual, I should say, they're not civilized, really. But if you read the comics, you know that they're more civilized than you think. So I think that kind of would have been cool to like see it branched out. So I mean, who doesn't want to see like some assassin Tuscan Raider type thing? Like it kind of would have been dope. But like we like know I how said, good of a shot they are. Exactly. And so like I, I can understand what Pablo Hidalgo, the meaning for the reasoning, but it just sounds cool. Like a rogue Tuscan Raider that could be like lethal in some capacity of maybe like an assassin, a bounty hunter, something. It just sounds cool, but I get what he was saying. But um, yeah, that would, I think that would have been probably my favorite change. And it doesn't help that I just read one of the comics where one of the chicks w was pretending to be, a Tuscan Raiders turned assassin. So it probably a little <laughs> bit more, but yeah, I think it would have been interesting to see. I a hundred percent agree with you, Brian bit. I would have loved to seen this. It's not my number one favorite thing that I would have loved to see, but I, it was up. I considered it. it I was, I thought this would have been really cool. And just be like you said, just because an entire species is a homebody species, that doesn't mean one of them wouldn't veer away from what they usually normally do. That's, you could totally have, we see stuff like that in the real world all the time. So uh, that would have been really cool. And especially after watching the Mandalorian episode where they show up and you, you had them using sign language. That's what it was. Imagine, it wasn't a comic. It was Mandalorian. Imagine seeing that. Like, who knows 
asked if they had decided that they use sign language at that time or not. But can you imagine just one standing by and just like nodding his head and not really talking uh, in in basic that much? And he could have been a, the sniper rifle of the crew. I, I think it would have been awesome. And it doesn't hurt anything, to be honest. That's true. You could just do a small camo like they did Chopper. You know, yeah. that's exactly how they did that. Um, all right, let's move on to Vader. Uh, just uh, one of the two Vader parts of this this fact checking. Um, and this is the one where in on his vacation time, he spends his time in his back to tank. Um, he soaks up all that back to <laughs> heals up. We know the damage he went through on uh, Mustafar with Obi-Wan. And according to uh, Witta and Whites, uh, they wanted to add a scene um, where he was essentially just you know, healing in the confines of the Star Wars sauna, as they call it. Um, we saw that in a trailer. Um, if I'm, did it make the movie? Did it make the final no. cut? It did make the final cut, right? I, I wouldn't believe so. Right. Um, I thought it was in the movie. It I says in the thing. So. I think it says it cut. They cut it. It, it might, my, my, I don't, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I'll have to go back and watch it. I, might I think watch it, it shows a back to tank, but it doesn't show him in the back to tank. Yeah. So they want to do like a full on close up of him kind of just like hanging out in the back to tank, resting, relaxing, like on Vader's off day, as they call it. Um, this would have been a cool shot. It, it it's not a hundred percent necessary because Vader is very much the most side piece of all side pieces of Rogue One. Um, but we know what he has to go through to be able to operate because he's essentially all robot and his body is just so distorted from being burnt. Um, it makes sense that he would spend 90% of his time sitting in a back to tank trying to heal up. It's to me, this isn't necessary at all. I, this would have been, we, I mean, we know he's not like just like, chilling all the time I mean, he's not sitting there reading a book like i mean he might be a sith text or something but i mean he's <laughs> just but like it, it's unnecessary to me like it there's probably a dozen other scenes that probably came close to being cut for this and i everything i saw minus that stupid squid monster i would keep so i mean it's kind of unnecessary for me the to see. Plus, it'd be weird to see him floating with no limbs in the back to tank, just chilling. Like they made it sound like he was chilling on his day off. Like, <laughs> so it's just weird. Yeah, I, it doesn't matter to me either way. It doesn't hurt or help anything really. It's just an extra little. It's kind of like another Easter egg thing. I uh, and I I could have sworn it was in the movie, but maybe I'm maybe I'm thinking of the trailer. It's possible I'm thinking of the trailer. But I, uh, I'm just wondering: Is he conscious when he's doing this? Like, is it relaxing? Is it like sitting in I a hot think bath? So I don't know. I think so yeah. I have a hard time believing Darth Vader's ever not fully conscious. Like he would ever like be out of the zone. Yeah, but does he like go to sleep? He has to sleep. Does he? He's, <laughs> he's mostly a robot. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to know what Darth Vader does on his alone time. He's exactly. okay. There's a there's a difference between a robot and having robotic limbs. That's a huge Darth, difference. It's like what a, a day in the life at Darth Vader's house. Like, no, we that, don't. that sounds like an awesome little comic strip right there. <laughs> it's just, it's weird. <laughs> All right, it's let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and move on to one of the more interesting facts that were revealed by Wooda and Whites, and that is the fact that Leia was originally considered to have a larger role in the film. Um, we know that Princess Leia showed up at the perfect time in the movie uh, for the very end, the final shot of seeing anybody on screen leading directly into um, the original star Wars movie. Um, I will say this, this is the one thing that would have changed the entire perspective of the movie for me simply because the characters that we know, they wouldn't have been the main characters anymore. It would have became a Leia spinoff movie. In my opinion, um, no matter how much you add her, if she, if there's a quote unquote, larger role that means that they're trying to add her into a prominent role not something like vader not something like a like a tarkin role like it would probably be even more than a tarkin role right it would become a leia spinoff movie or she would just become the main character and that's not what i wanted from this movie i love the way she showed up i think she showed up perfectly she said one word and it hit so hard it was emotional specifically because uh, carrie fisher had just passed um but i think that this would have been a mistake to do 
because you're not trying to make a Leia movie. You were trying to make a movie about something different when she was just involved. I match you. I, this was my also would have changed the whole entire movie. It, it, it would have, <laughs> I'm guessing it's it, Jacob's by that reaction. It's mine too. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Cause I didn't think that you, is, got, yeah. you guys would have, I picked this one thinking that you guys wouldn't, you would have a different one, but, um, yeah, it, it would have been a different movie. It would have been about all the rebels. It would have been about her leading this thing. It would have changed. It would have you changed. You might as well just call thing. it rebellion at that point. It, that's exactly where I was going with this. Is <laughs> it, it literally would it should have been just called rebellion and then her taking charge of the rebellion and this was one of the missions. That's Dude, I, would I love to see like a like a like like the princess of Alderaan novel, like a 16 year old Leia kicking ass? Sure. But yeah. I don't need her in this this type of story. I don't need her yeah. in this type of story. She no, was no. used perfectly. It would have been taken away from Jin mostly. Yes. Yeah. She she, it, she was used absolutely perfect the way she was. Tarkin served his purpose being in it more because we needed to know why he was not in charge of it during this time and stuff like that. Her, we don't need to know as much. We know she's the princess of Alderaan that is helping the rebels and stuff. And it segued perfectly into it. Yeah, I agree with you guys. I think this makes sense that she wasn't in any other parts of the movie because they said that talking about having her in the war room with, where they're having, uh, where they're Jin debating speech. whether they should yeah. go get the Death Star plans and where, yeah. And if they had her in that scene, it would have totally overshadowed Jin's speech, which is, unnecessary especially it's like the a, a young you know female character another young female character would have taken away from Jin, who is the main character of the story and that moment where leia shows up at the end was so big everybody was like like shocked and it that that was perfect the way they, it wouldn't have been the same that moment at the end wouldn't have been the same at all so i'm it's perfect the way they involved leia yeah. already i agree and i do have a feeling at some point they may do like some kind of story with her i don't know what but I feel like her role in the rise of the they rebellion will, is yeah. so important. Um, we saw it in a book already. I definitely think at some point we'll see it in a different medium. But until then, you got you guys use it perfectly, so don't do anything else to it. Um, all right, moving on to another incredibly large aspect that could have changed this outcome. <laughs> it is the fact that K2SO was originally the only hero of the crew that was going to die. Um, it said in early drafts, uh, Beyond just Jin and Cassian, which for the longest time, the two of them uh, during production production were going to make it out alive. Um, the rest of the Rogue One crew outside of K2SO was going to make it alive and that he was going to sacrifice himself. And they, not in the way that we saw in the movie, but that shot we saw in the original trailer of them on the beach. He was essentially going to go ham on a bunch of people and then die. Um, I will say this. This is the one thing I would have despised. This is the one thing I would have despised for the movie. And it's it's not just because more people needed to die, but you're doing a, you're essentially, it's essentially mm. a cop out move by killing just a droid. That's essentially what it feels like. Um, killing a droid in star Wars is like, Oh yeah. Another, it's just like another random act, right? It's not. <gasps> Shame on you. Hey, okay. I know that his L3 K2SO would be so mad at okay, you. Okay. I, I understand this. Look, I get it. K2SO L3. I get it. But if you just kill a droid on essentially what is a suicide mission, and out of eight people, only the droid That's dies. That's fair. It's a really, really dumb decision. Yeah. In my mind. It's a cop out. Yeah. Yeah. I agree, I agree with you, Jake. I, I'm glad they didn't do this. Uh, and especially it would have been in the two spinoff movies, the only main character to die. I mean, well, a big character to die would have been a droid and that's it. Like for the most part, you know, it's, it would have been uh, ridiculous. Like in, in both movies, the main droid dies like yes. that's too much, even though they both do. But in Rogue One, it's a totally different story because the whole crew dies. So I love the way they did it. Already. Yeah, yeah, I agree, because it's funny because it makes me think of when before, right before we went and saw the movie, I said to Jake, I was like, you don't think they could kill off Disney's going to let them kill off a whole entire cast? And he goes, I bet you they do. And <laughs> literally, I remember at the end of it going. Holy crap, Disney let them kill off every character and damn it, Jake was right again. So, yeah. 
Well, so that's that's what they said, that, or the article says that Witta and director Gareth Edwards had wanted to kill off every member of the group, but they didn't think that Disney would allow them to. Um, and so Whites and Tony Gilroy later came on board, and that's when the whole ending of the film changed. Uh, and that beach moment was taken away when they're charging the ATATs with the plans and everything. Um, and then that's when they killed everybody and the rest is history, as the article puts it. And so it's very interesting because Disney has this stigma of having these family friendly friendly movies, right? And the original director of the movie who didn't do the reshoots was like, I'm not going to make this move because I don't, I have a feeling it'll get shot down. And then the guy who comes in to do the reshoots is like, I'm, I'm going for it. Like F this, like I'm going to do this because I think this is what should happen. It, it was smart because it really shows like the importance and the casualty of war. Yep. And it, and it made, it made things more not realistic, but like it made things more important seeing you by the last hour and change you've cared about these characters. Sorry, not everyone lives in war and just wipes them all out. It's and it's also you can also add that and you it don't would have made where... no sense because go ahead, Jacob. Well, that's what that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, n- none of them are in the in a new hope or exactly. in any exactly. of the other trilogy movies so it would that would have made no sense maybe some of them going off like Jin's like look i'm done i'm bouncing that makes sense but all of them no yeah agreed there's too there's too many yes agreed agreed um if it was a smaller group then maybe but definitely not yeah. this company group if it was like uh, just Jin right. and cassian then maybe yeah which was a which was the original plan but yeah. ultimately they didn't decide to do that which was the smart move um okay cool little easter eggs here that we that could have been you know cool little mentions or or showed ups in the film is that wedge and tilly is an admiral akbar were originally uh thought of to be included in the movie um admiral akbar makes more sense in this case because of the line wedge says in a new hope, which is noted in the article, look at the size of that thing. Um, that means essentially that he's seen it for the first time and seeing the death star in rogue one would have made no sense in Canon if he showed up. Plus they added plenty of other pilots from the original movies in this movie to kind of give us that, yeah. that Easter egg feeling. Um, would I have liked to see an Admiral Akbar? Definitely, but they replaced him with an incredibly badass dude in Admiral Raddatz. Um, and so I think they did a good job here of creating a new character, kind of replace the favorite Mon Calamari, but not also, also by not including Wedge and Tilly's. Yeah, we didn't need them. We had um, R2 and uh, C-3PO cameos. We It was unnecessary. I want to I want to praise the whoever was literally the person <laughs> that literally thought of one line, a small line and was like probably Pablo Hidalgo. Yep. Probably. probably. Yeah. It probably was. And just like that one line would have changed the whole entire thing if they put this character in. One line. And it's it's crazy to think that like there's people that can think like that. Like one line in a dialogue of a movie could mess up a whole entire storyline. And someone's smart enough to know that. Admiral Akbar would have been dope, obviously. They must, I bet you they send all of the scripts to Pablo Hidalgo. They're like, can you just double check oh, this isn't so. messing anything so, yeah. up? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah, definitely. They probably literally have employees that are just in charge of the timeline. Uh, they're they're fact-checking. Yeah. That's all they're doing yeah. is fact-checking. Yeah. It's incredible. And they're getting paid the big bucks. Could you just imagine doing that as a, as a lifestyle? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Good Lord. Awesome. Um, all right. Uh, let's move on to one of the major story points that actually, that actually made the movie but ended up being reshot and removed from the movie. And this was that a Scarif, the final location of the movie originally had two facilities and not just the one giant tower that was shown. Um, and again, this was Tony Gilroy who came in and did the reshoots. And this is the famous scene that everybody talks about from the initial teaser trailer of seeing Jin, Cassie and K2SO and the crew running on the beach facing an ATAT. And in the distance, you can see a second building which was later removed. And ultimately this entire sequence was removed from the movie. Um, yeah. I mean, look, I would have loved to have seen this because it would have given us that beach scene. And that's what I wanted to see. I think that that, that, that could have really benefited um, from. Yeah, I know he's frozen. That's okay. <laughs> it's um, the most ugliest freeze. <laughs> you were frozen that. for the longest time. You Jake. were like this frozen. <laughs> I don't know what. Keeps <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. We're, yeah. we're almost done anyway. Um, I think that I, the beach scene is the one thing I always want to see. I've always yeah. wanted to see that beach yeah. scene. Um, it would have. I think it just. 
I understand why they didn't do it because it makes more sense for the tower just to be one giant tower like it always is in Star Wars. But it would have been really cool to see that battle sequence of them on the beach, you know, seeing K2SO go down right there, them facing an ATAT, pilots and ships flying everywhere. Um, and so, do I need two facilities? No. But if it would have given that me that sequence, I'm 100% on board for it. Yeah, I, I am okay with like that scene is obviously dope. Am I fine with what I got? Yeah. I, I, it's at the end of the day, like until we brought it up and talked about it again, I didn't remember that, that whole thing. So I'm fine with what we got. It ended up working and it flowed with the movie. Yeah. It didn't really make too much of a difference for me. I can, I could be without it or not. And they obviously, they changed so much that, we can't have everything that they originally intended for, so it's yep. it's not a big deal to me. Agreed. All right, let's move on to one of the more ridiculous things that they could have done with this movie, um, and that is Jin and Cassian once had a romantic relationship in the movie. Of course, it was hinted oh at goodness. and teased. No. It was hinted at and teased <laughs> in the movie already. They had a very cordial, um, close relationship as far as friends go, um, but the original plans, or in at least one of the early drafts, they were going to have a scripted romance. And I am so happy that this didn't make the cut because you don't need every main characters to be in love with each other. Um, you just, especially in a movie like this, you just don't need it. You don't need it. Um, you know, I understand that they might have a thing for each other, but in this moment, there's no time for a romance. There's exactly. no, time I was going to say romance. that. Yeah. And it's also adds to the fact that like how much I, I don't like the idea of the Raylo thing in the the rise of skywalker the force awakens and everything this would have been 10 times worse because this story doesn't call for a romance it's literally about death like everybody yeah. is dying around everybody you don't need love yeah I, it's <laughs> it's stupid i it, it it would have taken away from you're telling a war story you don't need to add love to it sorry it just it's dumb i don't know i'm not gonna <laughs> well especially if <laughs> it's that not e that's not even like their intention or anything like it it's hard to explain like it's not they weren't looking for love or nothing like that it's just mm. it would have been too much and how how many this movie is over a span of like what is it in less than 24 hours or something like that it's i feel like, like it's like two days long maybe yeah, yeah it, there's it's no, no more than maybe like if it was like two hours maybe if you did like they were training on yavin for like four months and then they went and did this then okay maybe a romance developed but not over two days so this if the titles the other titles they had weren't so terrible this would have been my oh my goodness i am yeah. so glad they didn't do this moment agreed thing. all yeah. right um let's go ahead and get to the one thing they didn't use that i wanted to see in this movie and that is vader mowing down rebels on the beach yes. um it is it's the one thing that's mine too it's the one thing that's talked about with this movie because it was revealed so early on. There were rumors flying around that they were going to do this scene. The The ship scene with Vader at the end was never intended for the movie. That, that scene was actually shot after post-production. It was added very late in the game. And uh, Wood and Wright's revealed that Vader was originally going to be on Scarif mowing down rebels, trying to chase them for these plans. And I'm so upset they didn't do this. I, I'm glad we got the ship scene of him destroying people in the ship but if they didn't give us that i would have been so mad that we didn't get this because we needed one or the other we needed one yeah. or the other just a little bit of vader destroying people i also think of that that rumor was flying around that vader was going to be using rebels as a human shield going up the oh, beach yeah like, I remember could you just that. imagine seeing that on screen and how like absolutely crazy that would have been so yes this is the one thing that didn't get used that i would have absolutely loved to be seen Go ahead, Jake. I agree, I I agree with you, Jake. This is definitely <laughs> mine because here's the thing. We've never had Darth Vader in live action in open battlefield. Never. So we've only had him in like closed corridors inside inside rooms fighting. And this would and we get that again. Look, I love the hallway scene in Rogue One. It is amazing. But this would have been better to me. I because there were rumors about this. We heard about it yep. leading up to the film. And I remember. I remember joking with my brother. I was like, look, there's going to be an X-Wing flying towards him. He's going to crush it in air with the force oh. and just turn it into oh. a 
<laughs> into a softball, like, and just throw it into like another ship. Like, can you imagine something like that? Darth Vader can do that. And yeah. I just, I hope we get to see it one day. But yeah, this is by by far the one thing I wanted to I want, see. I want an anthology. I want an anthology movie on Darth Vader. Yeah, me. I I wouldn't mind that. And look at all the comics. Here's stories. the thing for me. They said this involved him killing. Uh, I think the original plan was for Vader to kill like Jin and Cassian and all yeah. of them. I understand why they didn't do that because if you have him killing your main characters, that's maybe going a little bit too far. But you still could have had him do that, him killing regular rebels, and then going off to try to get the plans after they sent them up. You know. Okay, I agree. This scene would have been epic, but Don't here's my thing. <laughs> no, but you're he, wrong. No, but here's my thing. We could picture a million different freaking awesome ways that this scene would have been epic, but it doesn't mean we would have gotten a, the, that translation that we got. So for me, I'm going to 100% pick that hallway scene every single time <laughs> because of the fact that that might be one of the best, if not the best scenes in all of star Wars, in my opinion, because well, that if you, you didn't ask if you're going to say something about our rankings, that doesn't count because this is not part of it. Well, duh, but are you saying it's better than the throne? Are you saying it's better than for you? <laughs> I honestly might probably oh. say that just because of how brutal the music, yeah. how it literally goes to silence, and you well, just the hear red Ooh. silhouette and everything of those sound of fever from the thing, and then mowing people down. He's like a serial the, killer. In that. Well, <laughs> also, also, you think it's literally, literally minutes before he walks through the door of the tent yes. before in a new hope. It's it's so he's mad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we know why he's so mad. Yeah. It just <laughs> yeah, it literally just works so perfectly because it opens up episode four beautifully. Yeah. Perfect. That's a it, good like, argu that's the one good argument that I, I'll give to like why they didn't do the beach scene. It's it is literally perfect for those people like the, the people. Maybe that they're watching them from one to nine. It makes so much sense. Now, am I if I could picture a million awesome ways that Vader, like you said, Vader crushing an X-Wing, throwing it some like we could picture a, a million different dope things. That does not mean that it's going to work or look what a work cool. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's kind of funny to me to me to imagine seeing Darth Vader robot trying to truck through sand. Like it's like <laughs> he's okay. <laughs> he still walks normal. Like, yeah, <laughs> I, it's just, it's, I mean, like I said, we obviously can picture a million awesome things. Doesn't mean that that's what we would have gotten. I'm never going to ever. You will never see me complain about that hallway scene ever. I'll never complain to the hallway scene. I just, yeah, I neither. feel like, I think like what Jacob said, the idea of Vader in open in an open field with things yeah. around him being able to use to his exposure. Exactly. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah. It, it, it would be amazing. I do agree with Jacob. If he would have killed the cast, it would have gone too far. I think they got away with it because it's almost kind of like natural disaster. You like, it's not, they weren't murdered by someone. They were murdered by a machine that killed everyone. And I think that's kind of. Well, some of they, them got shot down first, uh, but the two main yeah, characters were but like a majority yeah, of them. Um, if yeah. Darth Vader's literally just stab, stab, force, throw, crunch K2SO, <laughs> then it's then you're getting a little violent. Like it's like, OK, but I still want to yeah. see it. But I understand why. Oh, me too. Do that me too. Part. I'm never yeah. going to be like. Yeah, don't give me Darth Vader in open combat, but because I can't imagine him killing Jin on screen, like no. right? Yeah, it would have been what I what I imagine what I imagine happening is that because they had talked about it in early drafts for the longest time, Jin and Cassian made it off. Jin and Cassian made it off. 
I feel like Vader would have killed everybody else, but those two would have made it away. Oh yeah, possibly. That's yeah. kind of what yeah. I feel like might have happened. Um, because that that made like the most sense. But then because they wanted to kill everybody, they had to take that whole scene out with Vader and find another way to use him. I think it also would have been kind of weird to see Vader kill Donnie Yen's character too. It kind of just like. His... Well, that's not to say that like what if. Like, what if Vader had direct, d- directed like a, a blaster bolt towards them, or they died not by the hands by him, but like fighting, and they just a different way. But he was in the oh, scene. Oh, true. Yeah, I don't know. It's just I like how it to me. This almost kind of comes back to the Leia thing, where it's almost like don't put too. They did you. They used Darth Vader and Leia in the perfect amounts. Same with Tarkin. They used Tarkin in the perfect amounts, in my opinion. So. That's fair. I, just, I wouldn't want an oversaturation of Vader, especially look, they were going to add him chilling in a back to tank. Like if they would, <laughs> it would have been a lot of Vader for this. And it, it, yeah, Vader That's was used as long as they have plans for the future to give me an open battlefield. Yes. with Vader. Yeah, do it someday. Just, <laughs> just adapt Lords of the Sith. That's all you need to do. Just adapt Lords of the Sith. Oh, my goodness. Not even that good. You're an idiot. Oh, my goodness, Brian. You're what is wrong idiot. with you? Wow. <laughs> on that note, we are getting out of here, guys. Um, any final <laughs> thoughts Jake's on Rogue One? Yeah, me. just through through the screen. Um, <laughs> any final thoughts on Rogue One and what finished or how it finished in any of the scenes that we had talked about today before we got here? Uh, Rogue Kirk. One has grown on me, to be honest with you. I I like it more and more. I, I mean, it's definitely like my second favorite of the new movies after Force Awakens. Brian? It's criminally underrated. It is uh, for people that just know Star Wars for the nine movies. This movie is just as good, if not better than a majority of the prequel and sequel movies. It's it's a I love this movie. It's it. You could make an argument that this is a war movie compared to just just Star Wars. Yeah, because like this is the type of things that you'd see in a war movie. They're tasked with recovering plans to bring to their other side. It's a great movie, and I don't think it gets the credit that it it should. It it I feel like Solo's like kind of not bomb, but like hated uh, on hated it kind of almost sucked in Rogue One a little bit because it was an anthology as well as a uh, solo, but this movie's fantastic. It's, it's, it's great. It's a great movie. It, it, it's amazing to me sometimes that it's a star Wars movie because it's just mine levels above some of the other ones. And I'm I'll glad it turned out you. the way it did. Cause look, most of these, we said, we're glad they didn't change it. So yes, yeah. agreed. Um, yeah, I would have to agree with all you guys. Everything that you guys said, uh, so much so that I might end up watching it later tonight. So I want to rewatch. Know, right? That's what I'm <laughs> yeah, thinking. I, I feel like I want to rewatch it. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, guys. Well, on that note, that is the Padawan Podcast for this week. As always, thank you guys for joining us. Whether you're on YouTube or audio, you guys can find us always on YouTube and audio. So Anchor, Apple, and Spotify, as well as right here on the YouTubes. Um, just search Apocalypse Movies or Padawan Podcast. Of course, you guys can find us on Twitter as well. Not just our um, our channel itself, but our all. Oh, personal accounts which you can see right below us uh boys thank you guys for joining me on this one of course always fun to talk star wars but more specifically rogue one because it's rarely talked about since it has came out um so i'm glad we got to kind of recap on it i'm excited next star wars thing we're talking about (laughs) yeah uh that's a plug for the fan lauren club next week or on friday guys that's on friday so make sure you guys check out our clone wars reviews everything else we have going on apocalypse movies again we thank you for joining us we'll see you guys next time and may the force be with you